And guys, appreciate it. Again, I think we are kind of running on time. So we'll kind of go through this a little bit quicker than I expected to, but I want to make sure we leave plenty of time for Andy at the end. He's going to, um, so, so Ben is here walk through kind of a design perspective of that. Um, and, you know, from, whoops, from, from my perspective, I'm usually working with people to understand, you know, this is your business case. This is what you're going to show. You know, what is the best way to be able to show that? But it's not, I don't ever get down to the design stage. It's where we usually go to Benazir and her team. And they're the ones that kind of help us get there. But before we get there, we want to understand, you know, we've got this business problem. We got this data. How do we tell a story with that? Or how do we help our people interact with that data that will help them solve problems, create actions from that or whatever? So I put a few things in here. We're going to go through very quickly for the sake of time. But you can Google search out there. There's tons of great examples of. Uh, visualizations that are out there, some of them that you may be familiar with, some of them not. This one kind of shows, you know, if you're, you know, if you're curious about when you're most possibly going to have your uh, baby, talks about when the most common times for that are. We had fun because we kind of were matching up my kids to when they were in there. One that's common for everybody that is very, um, you know, you're at or where people are at that may, you may know or, or just be interested in. Um, this was an interesting one, an older one back from 2016, but I always love tree maps. Um, that kind of laid out the, the um, this one um, was interesting and for some reason, oops, it is not, it, it actually, typically it will, will it's, it's, a, it's an animated one, for some reason that it's not animated right now, but it shows the progression of baby boomers from 1950 to current and uh, a great visualization when you're watching this and it was made to be presented on the web to be able to animate and show how the progression of that goes. So there's tons of those out there. And as you see, a lot of the ones I showed you probably we're not the same thing that, that I think most of our audience here is going to be looking at because, you know, there's different things that you can use visualizations for. And we'll talk about that as far as where you're wanting to put it. But, um, you know, you, a lot, most of us are focused on building dashboards for our users to be able to help them drive action on the data that they have. Um, some of this is geared towards more creating publications for it, and they have similar purpose there. Some of us do use these things in presentations when we're presenting something to people, helping show uh, show what we want to. But real quickly, before we jump in, um, I did want to kind of go through this. When we look at a visualization, there's typically, and I'm a big fan of Scott Baronado. He's the one that came up with this, and I've read his book many times, uh, Good Charts, and listened about all he has to say. So I, this is total credit to him, the stuff that he's done here. Uh, it's a great book if you ever have a chance to read it. But he broke these things down into different, you know, business use cases as far as what you're wanting to do. Um, where are you at as far as wanting to be able to um, you know, put this thing is, is conceptual or do you actually have data that's going to drive your answers to that? Um, where are you at in your process of being able to deal with this data? Are you still in exploratory mode or are you in declarative mode? So kind of understanding where you're on this trap matters as far as how you want to drive where you're taking your, your actual final result from this. Are you doing visual discovery or just throwing data into something to try to find answers? Um, are you looking just for ideals? You don't even really have good data, but you want to look for ideals and maybe where data resides that you can go after. Um, a illustration where it's just kind of, you know, again, you're putting something more like in a magazine or something that's just, you're trying to show an ideal, but you really don't have data or really um, hard set uh, uh, exploratory work already done. But where most of us live is in the everyday data viz, um, where we're actually, we've got data for something, we wanna do our discovery on it, but in the, the end result, we wanna be able to put out to where people can get to it. And uh, the thing I like, and this is another chart that um, Scott Bernardo used as well, in, very similar to that, but you know, his, his ideal is up in that right-hand quadrant is kind of where most people live, and that's what he calls his good charts. The charts where we're actually helping people make uh, decisions. They have excellent design. They're, you know, they're designed for the purpose. It doesn't mean they're overstyled. It means they're designed well to meet the purposes of what they're trying to do. When we work through this, again, Benazir talked about a lot of best practices. We do have a kind of a process that we work with through with people, and, and we're going to do a very quick one because of time. Um, we need to basically be able to go through a number of steps to be able to get there. The first thing that I always would say is let's talk it out. Um, understand what the need is. So this can be done with either an individual that you're working with that is the business subject matter expert that, that, that needs this or can be done with a group of people or putting together a dashboard or whoever your audience or, or people that you're working with are, but sit down and talk it out. Um, you know, have it back and forth. What is the context for it? Benazir mentioned before, context is so important to being able to tell your story. If you don't understand the context that you're presenting this in, then the data that you're presenting can be completely off base and, and tell you the wrong answer. So definitely understand the context. What do you want to convey and why? 
have those conversations that really digs into this and understand what is your goal of this. Um, not so you can provide bias to, to, to push it in some way or another, but so you can understand what your final goal from your actions are. Data rules always, we're not going into data that is for our next session uh, deep on this, but you know, visualize your data, throw in some tools and be able to look at it. I've got some really cool tools for even being able to do AI and stuff like just on the, on the fly, throw data in and it'll do some of that stuff for you. Find patterns, trends, and, and you know, again, don't jump ahead, understand what you're doing with your data before you get into it. This is probably going to spend most of my session today. My part of the session today is to sketch it out. Um, we've actually, we're going to do kind of a mock interview so we can kind of work through what it would really look like. Um, and again, that's why I'm trying to get through this stuff so quickly because I want to get to that part. But um, my suggestion is go analog. Um, you know, just get a pen and paper. Um, I was telling somebody I've got a big whiteboard behind me. My whole wall is a whiteboard. We sit there and sketch things out on that as well. I'm going to do this on a tablet so it's not completely analog, but it's not using a BI tool or something like that. It's just sketching out on a tool. So don't put design in this, don't do anything, go straight analog, straight sketching before you get into this, get your ideals out there, and then you can start working on those ideals. Um, be collaborative, again, very important. I'm not gonna go to this chart. I think anybody who's been in this field very long has probably seen this chart. This is one of the most popular one, Abella's chart. There's a few other ones out there, but this is something that's very interesting if you're looking at uh, a business case that you're trying to figure out how to visualize. Ask yourself a number of questions. Is, am I comparing data? Am I talking about distribution of data within it, composition of data, relationships? And then you can kind of map out. And again, I won't go through this now, but you can map out from there. You know, It helps you understand what type of visualization you would use. Now, what I only thing I would suggest is use this as a guide and not as the final answer, because there are always exceptions. And again, this is a creative science and art to this. So this is a guideline, but I never use this as a final you know, this is how it has to be. It tells me in this chart, I need to go here, here, and here. Priorities matter. Um, again, this kind of goes back to the conversation, that, you know, Benazir had as well. Know your audience, know your medium. So am I presenting this in a dashboard? Is this going to be in a uh, publication? Is this going to be in a presentation? And depending on what you're doing there, it may depend on, may, may help you decide where you're going to spend your effort. Are you going to spend more effort, you know, designing something that looks really beautiful, which if you're going to the uh, if you go into some type of publication, then that's going to matter. Do you want to drive understanding through the data? Do you want to, you know, so if, if you're presenting this in a presentation format, that may be the most important thing to you. You want to be able to drive somebody's decision and help them understand what you're trying to say. Or implication, which is where most of us live, is how do I help people drive actions through the data that they have? Um, and again, more visualizations to the same. And for the sake of time, I'm going to skip through these. Um, the final thing is once you've gone through that process, Prototype what you've got if you, you're happy with the sketches and everybody kind of feels like we're on the same page. Prototype it out, put it in the tools, start putting the tools and playing with it. It's still going back and forth, work with a designer. That's why we have Benazir and her team do such a good job of telling us what not to do um, and helping us figure out the right way to do these things um, and collaborate and, and go back and forth with your users as much as you can. Because as she mentioned before, just because me as someone who is used to seeing this data in one way, I think I see, I'm seeing, I'm getting the right thing from this. Someone else who actually is the user may say something different. So it's always good to collaborate. So to show this, and I'm gonna do this very quickly uh, or as quickly as possible. Um, we wanted to kind of go through just what it would look like um, to kind of have a mock use case. I actually was hoping to get you know, a customer to do this with, uh, and maybe we can afterwards at some point, but um, this is fun exercise for us. You know, how do you sit down with someone and have that conversation and actually do this stuff in real life. And this is kind of the process we do. It will be very abbreviated.